I do intrinsically believe that life can be better. And maybe that's just idealistic and, and, and false of me, but I do believe that we are intellectually capable of creating a world that is fairer. The, the human brain is so wonderful, but it's also so inherently flawed. You have all these cognitive biases, these prejudices that are defined to us, that are assigned to us. And we still have these primal fears of like ownership and property and you know, worried about others and all these things because of these primal roots that they exist in. And so I think that we have the capacity to do so much good. We're just held back by the fact that I think we've evolved faster than our brains have been able to. Like intellectually, we are so incredible with things we do. Do you know what I read the other day? Apparently in California, they're going to be creating plant, well not plant, it's meat, out of air. <laughs> right, this is mental. So apparently CO2, <laughs> this is insane. When they, they, this is NASA, NASA was studying this, because when, when um, astronauts breathe out CO2, there's microbes in the CO2, and then they can use those micro, microbes and put them like cell cultivation tanks or whatever, and it produces like a powder that's neutral, but it's 80% protein. And then you could theoretically produce a meat and just flavor it in a way that meat tastes, and you've produced meat using air, right? I mean, God, isn't that the most incredible thing you've ever heard of in your life? So we're so clever. We could potentially produce food from air, but we can't say, hang on a minute, like, you know, Let's treat each other better. So I, I think we can achieve that. And I think that maybe this is me being foolish, but it's worth a shot, maybe? You know? I don't know. I hope so. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's worth a shot. <laughs> I do believe that there should be legislative change that incentivizes things. And so what I mean is like, so let, let's say, um, but we could be very careful, right? Because let, let's say in Paris with the Gilets Jaunes protests that took place, that happened because of an eco-fuel tax, which for all intents and purposes was meant to be useful, meant to be a good thing to protect the environment, but caused, you know, well, <laughs> huge amounts of civil unrest, right? And so we have to be very cautious that, you know, people aren't going to react well to being mandated something, especially when it involves like taxation and stuff. As I said, we subsidize the meat and dairy industry by such a huge amount. To give you a perspective, the European Union, I think, spends 40% of its annual budget on subsidizing agriculture. In the UK, the EU gives 3 billion euros every single year to animal farmers. Uh, Brexit will, will change that if it ever happens, right? Let's see. But for the time being, 3 billion euros. <laughs> 3 billion euros. So huge amounts of money given to animal farmers to drive the prices down. And then we're going to put a tax. So the taxpayers are paying for a subsidy and then the taxpayers are paying for, yeah, it doesn't make sense. So I think like changing subsidies will, is, 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 a, is a game changer because it allows farmers to keep their livelihoods, allows for a fair transition into plant-based agriculture. Also makes food more accessible, plant-based food more accessible. And it creates a truly cost-reflective consumer choice. For example, in Wales, sheep farmers would lose £20,000 a year for sheep farming, but they make £30,000 profit because we subsidise them £50,000. So it's, it's, it's a complete false economy, right? It's propped up by, by taxpayers' money and subsidies and corruption, of course, as well, that incentivises that. So let's make it a fairer agricultural system and, and incentivise through redistribution of subsidies for more environmental and ethical purposes to a plant-based food system. That's a piece of government legislation I think is really important. You can't campaign for animal rights whilst having bacon on your plate. If we fundamentally think about it, the food industry contributes to the most amount of animal suffering on the planet. 70 billion land animals killed every single year. To, you know, as many as 2.7 trillion marine animals, they say between 1 and 2.7 trillion marine animals every single year. So, you know, trillions of animals killed every single year for, for like food and, and clothing as well, of course. To then be in favour of animal rights but not to tackle the biggest problem? Seems insane to me, you know, like, it, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, I, I think people can campaign for animal rights in, in varying forms, but in the absence of veganism or, or, or without vegan, you know, ad advocacy as part of that, then it's, it's infinitely flawed um, and deeply hypocritical. There's so many reasons to care about how we consume, and, but not about just consuming, but how we view others and how the, our mentality towards others impacts the world that we live in in the variety of ways that it does. And I think that information is just becoming kind of more abundant and the proliferation of all these studies and all this information is really reaching far and wide. And so I think it's just, it's kind of like that snowball effect, isn't it? Although I guess using the snowball analogy during global warming is probably a little bit like, not, not the best, right? It's like the, the barren acid ball effect, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, take the snowball, right? Like as it, as it rolls down, you know, it gets, gathers more and more snow. And then, and so for a long time, it doesn't seem that significant, but then all of a sudden it, 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 it you know, it gets large quickly. And I think that's what's happening now, that the snowball's been running for a while, but now it's really gathering momentum. I think there's just so many reasons for people to care. And we're seeing so much more information now that we're being compelled 
to talk about it. And I think that's what's been lacking, conversation, and now it's happening. And people are open-minded enough to listen like you guys, so thank you.